Governor David Patterson has never been one to shy away from a challenge. Despite the loss of his sight as an infant, he managed to climb the ladder in the difficult world of politics. When he finally reached the pinnacle of his career, taking over as the governor of New York, he was faced with a dark cloud left behind by his predecessor and a massive financial crisis facing the state. The first African-American governor in New York is known for his quick wit and serious focus. And both were on display when he accepted the Roosevelt Institute's Distinguished Public Service Award. I have never <clears throat> heard more undeserved accolades in one session in my entire life. Also, they took all of my speech material for this evening. But uh, the reason for being and the reason of purpose of the Franklin and Eleanor Roosevelt Institute, I think needs to be stated and restated. We wish to fulfill the mission of two great Americans who struggled and persevered during one of the most difficult times in history and have laid out for us a foundation and a plan that is applicable at all times in history. This organization is re really the catalyst for the enlightenment of generations as to the historic and civic value of having Franklin and Eleanor Roosevelt in this country in the positions that they held just 75 years ago. The rare combination of skills that each of them possessed in many ways changed all fabrics of our society. And this is the vision that this great work can be studied, can be repeated, and in many respects can be applicable for other situations in emergencies such as the two of them faced. So I couldn't be more honored to receive this award this evening right here at Columbia University. Uh, I just want to say that President Roosevelt played an amazing role in my life. And I never thought that I would play any role in his legacy. And I just wanted to share it with you before I leave this evening. When I was a sophomore at Columbia University, I took a course called Franklin Delano Roosevelt and the New Deal. And the professor's name was Basil Rauch. In the summer of that year, I was turned down for employment because of my own disability. Uh, the individual who was the local NAACP chapter head couldn't see the discrimination that he was fighting against African Americans being redressed by him against a disabled person. They didn't think that I could put uh, sandwiches and apples in a box for a school lunch program. I came back to Columbia and went from the dean's list to another dean's list. I think they call it general academic warning because I didn't show up for any exams in the fall of 1973. And at this particular time, I probably could have been dismissed from school. At that time, I went back to see this professor, Basil Rauch. Isn't it interesting? His first name was Basil, like my father's first name. It was kind of like synchronicity. He gave me the best fatherly advice I ever got. He said, you're the first student I've ever had that I'm encouraging to leave school. <laughs> he said, because what bothers me about this story is that when you were turned down for employment, you blamed your friends who took the job that you didn't get. You blamed your brother who was hired when you were not. You blamed your family for not sticking up for you, but you actually didn't do anything. So what I would suggest you do is go out into the workforce by yourself, find yourself a job, and stand up for yourself. I went out and did that for two years. And then I came back and got my degree from Columbia and went on to law school. By the way, one of the fundraisers I had early on as a state senator, you'll never guess who showed up at the fundraiser. The person that didn't give me the job. 
And he said to me, back in Long Island, we always knew you were going to be something. And I said to him, if I ever get to be anything at all, there will be people I have to thank, and there will be people I have not to thank, and I just hope you know which list you're on. <laughs> My mother told me that was one of the most mean-spirited comments she ever heard. My father told me it was cool. But the reason I tell you this story is that Professor Rauch showed me a picture of Franklin Delano Roosevelt when he had first become ill. And he had practiced so he could walk into the state convention to receive the nomination as governor. And he had worked hard just so he could move these few feet because he wanted to promote the image of himself standing and being strong. But some people who were trying to be helpful grabbed him and carried him in. And there's a picture of him looking absolutely frustrated. And what the professor told me is, you may be frustrated now, but you can work through your pain. I think it's the best advice I ever got in my life. And from that time on, I always equate the rewards and the victories of President Roosevelt as they were transferred to me in that class here at Columbia as a groundwork for public service. That's when I actually wanted to do what he did. So you probably didn't know when you selected me to receive this award this evening that it was selected in the name of my own personal hero. And so I want to thank you very much and let you know that being in the spotlight for a moment is flattering to any of us, but the warmth and the great work and the great sincerity that I feel from this organization will stay with me for a very long time. Thank you very much. Congratulations to Governor Patterson. If you'd like to learn more about the Institute, its mission, and the legacy of FDR, you can visit his presidential library in Hyde Park, or check out the Institute's website at www.feri.org. Coming up next, a quick check of the day's headlines.